holding placards and chanting no state visit. Tens of thousands of people protesting in British cities against US President Trump's travel ban on Monday night. The London protest outside the Downing Street residence of British Prime Minister Theresa May, calling on her to cancel Trump's planned state visit later this year. And there comes a moment when we have to ask our government, where do you stand? And that's why I'm here today. Not just because I believe what Trump is doing is appalling, not just because I believe it's counterproductive, not just because I know that it will not achieve even what he says he is trying to achieve, but because I want my government to stand up and say he is wrong. However, May won't be backing down. The, the uh, United States is a close ally of the United Kingdom. We work together across many areas of mutual interest uh, and uh, we have that, uh, that special relationship between us. Uh, I have issued that uh, invitation, the informally issued that invitation for a state visit for President Trump here to the, uh, to the United Kingdom and that invitation stands. The invitation involves lavish displays of royal pageantry and a banquet hosted by Queen Elizabeth. In a grassroots backlash, over 1.6 million people have signed a petition asking for the state visit to be cancelled, saying it will be an embarrassment to the monarch. Once a petition passes 100,000 signatures, British lawmakers must consider it for debate in Parliament. Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson already questioned for over an hour in Parliament on Trump's executive order. A growing list of politicians calling for the visit to be cancelled. The petition, already the second most popular ever on the parliamentary website, showing no sign of slowing down. And I want to salute Sally Yates, who has taken a stand based on moral and legal principle in the highest tradition of the Department of Justice, saying that these orders cannot be defended, that the rule of law and morality is more important than the politics of the moment, and the impulsive edicts of a ruler who apparently fails to understand that law, or at least his administration does. And it raises the question of whether the next attorney general, she is only acting, will have the strength and courage to uphold the rule of law. Well, the Mexican president, meanwhile, says he's spoken to President Donald Trump by telephone today. That conversation comes in the context of a brewing row of the construction of a border wall and just who is going to pay for it. Well, only yesterday, President Peña Nieto cancelled his face-to-face -face talks with Donald Trump, which was supposed to be held in Washington next week. Well, for more on that, we can speak now to Maurizio Zanardi, who is a professor of international economics at Lancaster University in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Now, it's only been a week, and already we've heard a, a pretty unprecedented war of words between Washington and Mexico City. How much economic damage do you think this is likely to have done Mexico so far? Well, so far, possibly not a lot, except in terms of the uncertainty that all these statements and counter statements are giving to businessmen and to the economic environment. However, potentially the economic cost on both sides of the border or the wall, let's say, could be quite substantial. Do you think Mexico holds any uh, Trump cards, if you'll excuse the pun, when it comes to doing something to retaliate against uh, the United States? Well, uh, Mexico can do a lot of things as well. It also depends uh, in which way the actions of uh, President uh, Donald Trump will actually materialize. But for sure, if the United States were to impose a 20% import tariff, uh, which will be not uh, legal under the current uh, trade commitments, well, uh, Mexico could do the same. And this could escalate all, all the way to a full-blown trade war, which will not be in anyone's interest. Mexico could follow a more legalistic approach and complaining in 
in the, at the WTO about uh, what would be an unfair treatment, but again, it really depends how the United States will carry out uh, this uh, threat. But for sure, Mexico can do something, and my sense is that it will also receive quite some support uh, from other countries that uh, stand uh, to be at the grant of um, President Trump uh, following up uh, from the actions against Mexico. Yeah, I was going to ask you, actually, precisely on that point, you know, can you envision Mexico gathering the support of neighboring countries, well, countries at least uh, south of, of Mexico, namely Latin American countries, and perhaps collectively exerting uh, some form of pressure on the United States? Yes, most definitely, because um, President uh, Trump, uh, during his campaign, has uh, said the various time that he wants to renegotiate uh, NAFTA. Well, NAFTA is not only an agreement between the United States and Mexico, but there is also Canada involved. Already, President Trump has withdrawn the United States from the TPP agreement with Asian countries. Um, it's not clear what is going to happen on this side of the ocean. Just today, we heard very much of a special relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States, but there is clearly Europe in the picture, Europe, UK, Europe, United States. And so all of these can give rise to quite a strange chain of events that is also actually fairly difficult to predict at this point. And just lastly, Professor, the uh, Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim has been speaking this evening. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to what he said, no. but he said that he was willing to help act as a sort of interface between uh, the Mexican and the U.S. governments. And he's also spoken about how this spat with Washington has actually united the Mexicans more than ever before. Let me just ask you for your thoughts briefly. Do you think he's being realistic there? Do you think he could bridge the two sides? And do you think he's right about the Mexicans being fully behind their president? Uh, yes, on, on both counts. Uh, clearly, when there is a, an enemy, a common enemy, that uh, leads uh, people, uh, uh, citizens of a country, to unite. And that's what we observe, and we have evidence of that uh, in the academic literature. Whether a businessman can help, uh, well, we have to remember that uh, President Trump is, uh, first of all, a businessman, and possibly he will be able to better interact with someone that has the same type of background, that can speak the same type of language, and that has a framework of mind that is closer to what uh, President Trump has done until recently. Whether that will change the outcome is not clear, but it may not actually be a bad idea to involve a third party which is not involved in this political establishment that the Trump campaign has completely attacked over the months that we just finished. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for sharing that with us. Uh, Professor Maurizio Zanardi at the University of Lancaster in the United Kingdom. Thank you very much indeed.